We're in Lakewood, New York. It's about an hour and a half outside of Buffalo. Lakewood, New York is a little off the beaten path. You would not necessarily expect a world-class brewing company to be in this part of the world. But with Southern Tier, you'll find something that will completely blow your mind. Craft brewing, to me, really means that Brewers are putting 100% passion into the quality they're producing. It's not something that's distributed for commercialization. People are putting their heart and soul into the product that they're producing. I get the sense too that people in the greater Buffalo area in Western New York take a hell of a lot of pride in the fact that they've got world-class beer here in their backyard too. It's a nice place to visit. We have a wide range of things that happen throughout the year for our special events that we have, beer tastings, and our tour is fantastic. To step into Southern Tier's kitchen is to be swallowed up in heavenly aromas. Mm. Sweet, crunchy, malty. It's probably not how you're meant to eat it, but uh, the staple of a good beer. Cheers. So if you were to have one pint of beer a day, it would take you about 68 and a half years to finish this tank by yourself. <laughs> I like it. That might be a challenge worth taking on. How many beers pass through here a day? How, how much are you packaging? 12 ounce bottles will go through here at about 12,500 bottles an hour. So <laughs> an hour. The chocolate, it's renowned worldwide. It's the signature beer of this Southern Tier brewing experience. This one's dangerous. Um, I want to bathe in it. I want to uh, make out with it. Uh, it's I don't want to miss that, you go ahead. So if I was going to have different beers all around America, how is Michigan and the Northeast different to the West Coast, for example? Our, our beers tend to be a little bigger, a little bolder, uh, a little bit more complex. Margot, this is the perfect example of beer porn right here. Absolutely, it's what, beautiful. And, and what's going on? We've got four different beers to try. Where are we starting? Uh, we're starting right here with All Day IPA. I think the best way for me to sum that up is I'm in my happy place right now. <laughs> so you're doing 115,000 barrels of beer per year in here. And this is our packaging line, and this is actually always in a state of uh, of revamping. These bottles all go up on the conveyor and work their way down. They all shake and shimmy and jive. They, <laughs> they fall into a single file line, bottleneck down. I love the way you describe it too. Shake, <laughs> shimmy and dive. Yeah, yeah. You and I understand uh, that you still have a tab over in the tap room, so uh, it's time to get to work. Well, if this is called work and it means free beer. I mean, we're here early, early evening on a Monday. And obviously what you've been doing has been very successful because Grand Rapids, I believe, was number one beer city in the USA in 2012. Yeah, I mean, Grand Rapids, I, I've, I've been born and raised here, so this is a great community. They've really embraced our brand, um, you know, and it's a great community to grow up in. Cleveland has a rich brewing history, dating right back to the mid-1800s. The very evolution of American beer is happening right here at one of my favourite stops in Cleveland, Great Lakes Brewing Company. Can I jump in there? Is that okay? Absolutely not. Come on. Family? Well, of course, drinking beer brings people together. And medicinal purposes? I mean, of course, it's good for the heart, isn't it? As well as the mind, mind body and soul. Yeah. So the building that we're standing in here now that you can see up in that photo, the Elton Building, uh, originally was a four-story structure that we lovingly refer to here at Great Lakes as an Irish B&B. And uh, I'm assuming you don't mean a bed and breakfast? No, not, not quite. quite. The first floor was the bar, then we had a burlesque show on the second floor, and the third and fourth floors were boarding rooms. Perhaps they could have been charged by the hour, so okay. that would be the Irish bar and brothel. It's making sense now. <laughs> so you're telling me the brothel's over here? Like, over here? Yeah, it was just right upstairs. Moving on then. I think it's fascinating that, like, 
for many years we heard about wine and food pairings, but now we're hearing about beer and food pairings. Any kind of beer you make, you could you could pair it with any kind of any kind of meal. A very nice combination there. Heavy, light, perfect. Okay, so the next step is to the entree. The entree, what we have here, we have a Ohio raised pretzel crusted chicken with uh, fresh local vegetables, and it's being paired with our Burning River Pale Ale. I would never have imagined in my life that a beer would go with a dessert, ever. And this, the Elliot Ness, the beer, the darker beer, really goes so excruciatingly well with the bread pudding. You know, making beer is just like cooking. When, you, when you're making it, you can really manipulate the flavors just like you can in any, in any dish. You've just taken me to food and beer heaven. Give me a brotherly hug, mate. Yeah. Shootouts, brothels, bread pudding in whiskey butter. What more could you ask for? Oh, Chicago. Goose Island is really a staple of Chicago and it's a very well-known craft brewery around the country and also around the world. It's always fascinating walking into a place full of history and uh, people are seated around the bar and you know people really sort of get to know each other over a pint. When you walk into the brew pub here, that's the experience that you're going to find. Well, I'm intrigued here, John, with all of these barrels. Uh, you've got bourbon barrels. I see you've got some barley wines down here. What, what the hell is going on? Barrel aging has become very popular with beer. That's definitely something I could, I could imagine myself sitting in a quaint, charming English pub on a, on a cooler day with great ambiance. How have the English taken to that? Nothing but great reviews. Well, good, I can see why. <laughs> Beer number two, mm -hmm. speaking of England. Beer number two, this is called the London Fog. The base beer here is a milk stout and we added milk chocolates and Earl Grey tea. And the London Fog is definitely something I could envision myself on a really snowy, freezing cold Chicago day and having one to warm me up. It is the perfect beer to drink when it's cold outside. Having spent some time in Belgium, they've paved the way for a lot of what craft brewing is, is doing today. Would I be there's, right in saying that? There's a lot of American breweries that are chasing after that perfect Belgian beer. In a nutshell, Andrew is a craft beer expert and he's a food expert. And quite often you'll get one or the other, but not both. And that's why he's the one and only certified Cicerone chef in the world. I get a lot of face time with the brewers so we can kind of start developing recipes that are really going to work from start to finish with the beer that they're working on as well. This is almost the staple of Americana, burgers and beer. I've been on a quest for years trying to find the ultimate burger and a beer. The food is brilliant, the beer is brilliant. It's no surprise that Goose Island are doing amazing things around the world and uh, you're at the helm of that, so. I'm, I'm glad you can be here. It, and thank you. This is the epitome of pub grub, right? Absolutely. He drinks beer, he tastes food, pairs them together. Sounds like the absolutely perfect job to me. Another good chipping tip out there, if you have a tree in front of you or you have something right in front of you that's going to block your follow through or maybe you want to fool your playing partners into thinking that you hit a left handed chip if they could only see the top half of your body, try the following. Again, up there to probably six or eight feet, not a bad result. But because we're down lower than where the green is situated, the playing part partners might have missed the chip shot. They might have looked up, seen my follow through and thought, shit, this guy can, you know, he swings both ways. Ports and pints on back9network.com and you can also follow the blog on my Twitter handle, at Ewan Ports, and also on my Facebook page, Ewan Porter Golf and Media. Uh, every Friday, you can, you can find my blog on uh, back9network.com. Ports and Pints is the name of Ports it. Ports and Pints. And you can uh, find, you can learn from me what to and what not to have uh, on the road, whether you're travelling domestically or internationally. That's good. And maybe you can just help Jen not to get a beer gut. Yeah, she maybe. Loves, she loves to yeah. throw them down. I, I don't do, think she has know. to worry about that somehow. As you know.